Hey everyone, Cody here. And I wanted to share this video. Um, sorry I'm in my bathroom, but my kids are awake, so it's very noisy out in the house. Anyway, I wanted to share this video with you just to proclaim how good God is. And and not in a selfish sense, but, um, but just out of gratitude. Um, I have a peace that I haven't felt in a long time. You see, one of the things I struggle with is this need to create. Um, I feel like I need to create uh, writing or painting or videos or whatever because I I feel like I am not useful if I'm not creating things. And I think that creating can be a good thing, right? I'm not saying it's bad, but when it comes from a place of either an outlet for depression like it was before, or it comes out of this feeling of, needing to make more money so i was creating just to create to try to make more money um it's not good it's not good because then it's just uh this act of creation there's not any love to it there's not any you know it's not glorifying god in a way and i so, i know that sounds weird but i think that you can seriously worship god in everything that you do and i wasn't honoring god in the writing or the painting some of it was about god but I wasn't creating it because of my overwhelming love for God. It was just creating it to create. And even a lot of my videos are a product of that. Now, I understand if people's businesses are based on creating content, then they have to create it to make ends meet. I, I understand that. But that wasn't my case. So um, for a while, I've been feeling very empty. I've been feeling that God was not hearing my prayers. And I've been feeling just that everything I've been doing um, was in vain. Like I've been spinning my wheels to get nowhere. And um, I've been feeling this way for a while. And over the course of the last couple of days, um, you know, I, I don't go on a lot of social media. I don't have TikTok, I have Instagram, but I never go on there. I have Facebook, I hardly ever use it. YouTube is about the only place that I actually go on to. And so, but even in watching YouTube videos, I've been feeling very empty. And I've been feeling that I'm doing stuff for God. I'm, you know, my wife and I host a small group and, you know, we do premarital counseling and, um, you know, I serve a church and I attend church. So, you know, I'm, I'm very involved in church activities. And again, I don't say that to brag or boast or anything. I just say that because I am. But it's been feeling like I've, I've had this feeling spirit of just not wanting to do it not wanting to do any of it like it's a burden right but um it's not a burden <laughs> the opportunities to both be with god in service but also to serve him in many capacities is a blessing you know it's an honor to be able to <laughs> to do that to to help other people grow in christ by serving them and, and spending time with them and stuff like that because God has done so much for me. So why would I not want to pour that out on other people? But um, over the last couple of days, I started getting these videos from other Christian YouTube channels. And some of them have been really good. Like they've really kind of shown me what I've been missing. In fact, the last few weeks, one of the things that I love to do is pray. I love praying. I love it. And, um, you know, I love to pray. And I even wrote like a short book on how to pray. But lately, I've been feeling like my prayers were hollow and empty. And not necessarily that I wasn't trying to pray for that person, but I, w I didn't feel God's presence in any of those prayers. And I didn't feel like he was kind of moving in those prayers. And, um, you know, it's disheartening. You know, you can pray for someone for healing or for something to happen in someone's life and just never see that happen. And it can be discern, you know, it can be a little um, disheartening. So, you know, I've been feeling very frustrated with that. Like I got even to the point where I didn't want to pray. Well, I started getting these videos recommended to me. Because I watch Ruslan, I can put a link in the description. And he does some good videos about different topics. But um, he talked about a guy, named, or talked with a guy named Isaiah Saldivar, I think it is. 
I just found him, so if I got it wrong, I apologize. But I'll link to him as well. Well, Isaiah is, you can tell he's a very strong man of God, right? He goes and he actually goes out and prays for people in public, and um, he dissects parts of the Bible. And, you know, I watched this video where he was in a movie theater, and he started praying for people in the movie theater, and they started vomiting up demons because I guess that's the body's kind of natural reaction is to literally heave it out so that kind of like struck me like I want that I want that I want to be able to pray for people and see things happen and not for me I think in the past I've had a lot of selfishness in the way that I prayed I wanted to see things happen and I would say, well, I want you, I want things to happen for God. But what I really wanted it was for validation for myself. I don't care anymore. <laughs> um, so anyway, watch these videos. But also there's, um, there's a book called Radical that I started listening to a few days ago. And it's by David Platt. The book is amazing. If you're a Christian, I challenge you to listen to it. It's not an easy listen or an easy read because he challenges you to get out of your comfort zone and start doing things for other people and especially going to you know other missions like going on missions or going to other countries to spread the gospel so it's a very challenging book i'm just going to say that up front but i felt convicted the other day so i was listening to this book after dropping my wife off um and I, you know to go hang out with some friends and on my way back to my house as I'm listening to this book and it's talking about these complacent Christians that he met that, you know, they just didn't care about the loss, they, you know, which is very sad. But um, as I'm listening to this, I see a homeless guy just lying on the sidewalk um, at a gas station down the street from my house. And I felt a stirring. Um, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, it's like, go talk to him. Um, and I didn't want to, but um, I just I kind of kept driving and I was like, okay, if you really want me to go, you're, you're not going to let this go. He didn't. I almost got to my house and that stirring just got stronger. So I turned around, I drove back, I parked, and I went over to him. I was like, hey man, uh, can I help you? And, you know, we struck up a conversation. And the guy's name was Jeffrey. You know, I don't know if I'll ever see this, but um, I saw his shoes. His shoes had holes in them <laughs> underneath. Um, and he was just filthy. <laughs> and all he had was a blanket. And I asked him if I could take him to the store and buy him some stuff and help him out. And he agreed. So we went to Walmart. I bought him some clothes and some shoes. Um, gave him some money for food and... He just wanted to go right back where he was. So that's fine. You know, we did that. I walked around with this guy. I wasn't ashamed to be around him, even though he smelled and he looked terrible. But um, but I got to pray for him. So before he got out of the car and I, I took him back to where he was, and I asked him if he wanted anything else or wanted to go anywhere. And he's like, no, I'm okay. But he let me pray for him. And I don't... I don't say all this so that people will think that I'm a good person. I'm not, I'm not sharing that because I know what the Bible says about letting the left hand know what the right hand doing is doing. And I also know that we don't do our works to get the approval of men. Because then that's our reward. I'm not saying any of that for that. Um, I don't want to cry. I say that because we're called to do that. <laughs> It's such a simple thing, right, to just extend help to people who are lost. Whether they're here, you know, in your home place of residence or around you or across the world, it doesn't matter, right? We're called to do more. And so I, I did that a couple nights ago. I, you know, I, I took that guy shopping and I prayed for him and I went home and I felt more of God's presence. And that was Friday night. So after I did that, I started getting recommended those videos as I was still listening to the David Platt book. Um, but I also started getting recommended videos by Isaiah. And, um, and then there was another 
pastor who dresses up in normal clothes. I, I don't remember his name. I've only seen a couple of his videos, but he goes around and he goes to like, you know, tarot places and he goes to those places where they have the crystals and stuff like that. And he goes in and talks to him and then he prays for him. Um, and these watching these videos yesterday, Saturday, uh, I just felt a renewed sense of purpose because I see these guys going out into public and actually praying for people in public and, and not being afraid to share the gospel with people and seeing either deliverance or seeing, you know, prophesying over these people or knowing things about the person that they didn't tell them. And I just, I want more of that. And I realized yesterday that one of the reasons I haven't been feeling that is because I've been filling the void of God's presence and, and God's purpose with creating and it, and it kind of ties all of this back right so you know i i've been writing or painting or drawing whatever i've been creating for a long time and a lot of the creation i've done is because i felt like i had this need to to make money or i i created because i just did it as an outlet for something i was going through but not because it was to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people. And I just don't, I, I only want that. I only want to share God with people. That's it. I feel very resolved after yesterday, after, you know, helping that guy Friday and, and seeing all these videos yesterday of, of people able to do these awesome things. And I also saw some videos that were kind of challenging about the way that I view Christianity. And it's just very, I'm very lax about it. But God calls us to more. So, sorry, my nose is running now. Um, I'm going to post this video. I guess my the point of posting all of this is that God calls us to, to more. He doesn't call us to try to pursue some, you know, American dream wrapped up in a Christian label. You know, he doesn't tell us to just work 40 years and then retire and then maybe we'll do stuff for people or, you know, just go to church on Sunday or he doesn't tell us to just, you know, maybe pray for people every now and then. He tells us to go out and baptize the nations and to, you know, feed the hungry and, and pray for the sick and all of these things that we're just not doing. We make all these excuses and I don't want to be that anymore. I, as if I wasn't already doing things for Christ, I really want to show people the love of God. Um, that's it for the video. My nose is starting to run. and I don't really have anything else to say, but I wanted to both encourage you to just pursue a deeper relationship of God and not just make it about you. It's not about us. God saves us so that we can then go and save others. But I also want to challenge you. I would challenge you to to listen to the book Radical by David Platt, um, or also watch some of the videos by these two pastors that I found. And I'll, I'll link to them because, again, I don't remember the second guy's name, but just amazing testimonies of him just going to, to eat lunch and saving people. So that's it. I just wanted to share that, and I, I pray that God will bless you. And I'll link to my prayer book as well you know if you're interested if you want to learn just kind of the approach i take to pray at least to get you better at praying out loud so anyway um i praise god for anyone that sees this video i praise you i thank you for for giving me your time and attention but i also just challenge you to to do more um and look at how you can serve um you can serve god that's it um, yeah, I'll see you guys.